Hello, I am Anurag Tripathi. I am a faculty member in the Department of Physics at IIT Hyderabad and I will be your instructor for this course which is Introduction to Quantum Field Theory. Okay, this is basically going to cover theory of scalar fields. Okay. To set the stage for this course, imagine this. You have an electron and a positron, you know positron is the anti particle of electron. Okay. Now, these two are rushing towards each other with at very high speeds compar comparable to the speed of flight. Okay. So, really, really fast, okay. which means that the total energy in this system is enormous because they are coming, coming at very high speeds and they collide. Okay. When they collide, they annihilate each other that is the electron and the positron no longer exist and in the final state after the collision lots of new particles are created okay you might be creating photons you might be creating um, diff, um, z bosons higgs bosons leptons whatever okay several new things have been created in in that collision Now, if we wish to describe this interaction that has happened, we might be tempted to use the quantum mechanics that we have been using uh, in learning for, for example, the hydrogen atom or uh, trying to solve Schrodinger equation for other simple system. You might be inclined that the same framework will work for describing this process. Okay, after, all, it's, after all, it's a process that happens at very small scale. And of course, the speeds are high, so probably you want to throw in a bit of uh, relativity into this. Okay. But the moment you think a little bit about this, you realize that that program is not going to work. You see, imagine you sat down and set up some equations of motion that you want to solve to study the system. So you describe, uh, you ascribe some wave function psi for the electron, some something for the positron, okay, and then you sit down normalizing the the the, the wave function psi for electron, for example, okay. You write down that okay, I require mod psi square um, integrated over all space would be one, but the moment you write this down, you realize the fact that this condition or this normalization which is part of this entire um, setup that you are creating requires that this electron be present somewhere in the universe at all times. You see mod psi square as a function of x and t integrated over the entire space is 1 meaning it has to be somewhere. But the process which we talked about okay about an electron and positron colliding and annihilating each other in that process that electron and that positron they both disappear there is they are not there anymore okay so you cannot write a wave function the way you, you used to to describe this process because that way requires writing down um, we have a function for electron which in which electron is always there. Okay. So, clearly that single particle quantum mechanics which we have studied before is not providing you a suitable framework to study these kind of processes where creation or annihilation of particles is possible. Okay not only about that electron and that positron that disappeared the, the particles which were created they were not there to begin with okay in the in the beginning of the interaction these particles were not there so how you are going to write down those wave functions okay so clearly we need to do something and uh, the hint comes from the theory of um, um, electromagnetic fields. Okay, 
imagine you are trying to make a quantum theory of um, electromagnetic fields. Okay, so there you would be quantizing what you would be quantizing fields because you know there are electromagnetic fields or uh, uh, four vector a mu. Okay, that's also field a mu of x, and that is what you will quantize to get a quantum mechanical version of the classical electrodynamics. Okay. And there of course, you know that photons are created and uh, destroyed. So, it gives us a, a direction to explore and see whether that works well for us. Okay. So, what we would be doing in this course is quantizing fields and actually it will work out very nicely. It will enable us to describe the process which I described to you. Okay. And that is why the name is quantum field theory, it is the quantization of fields. Okay, so, that is um, that's the, uh, that's the reason why we would like to uh, study quantum field theory. Just to be clear at the very outset, quantum field theory is not a theory of anything. Okay, it does not describe any, any, uh, any interactions it is a framework. It is a framework in which you make theories. Okay, just like special relativity is not a theory of something, it is a, it's a, it's a framework. It's, it provides the calamitical framework for uh, everything that uh, goes around us. Similarly, this is a framework for describing uh, interactions that happen at low scales and uh, small distance scales and uh, high velocities. So, that is a uh, framework. This code there are several prerequisites. Let me try to write down something here. This course is pitched at the level of students um, who are doing their masters. Okay, They are in the final year of masters in different Indian, Indian universities or could be uh, students who are beginning to do their PhD in high energy physics. Okay. So, prerequisite is among uh, all the prerequisites you have quantum mechanics. So, you should have learned quantum mechanics okay, that uh, is definitely required. Okay. So, uh, you should know that you know to make a quantum theory starting with the classical theory you um, you can start with the Poisson brackets okay, and replace the Poisson bracket by a commutator okay, and you should put an IH bar. Maybe I will get back to this point a little later. So, definitely you need to know quantum mechanics and of course, special relativity. Okay. You should have also taken a course on classical mechanics. Okay. Um, so, you should know for example, that if you are given an action for a system, how to arrive at the equations of motion uh, using that action that is what you should have learned and uh, it will be helpful if you have also studied some electrodynamics because that would also provide you with the tools uh, that will be useful in this course. Okay, so, let me uh, write down. So, from action why is it writing so big? from action, you should be able to arrive at equations of motion. Okay. Now, remember um, quantum mechanics brings an h bar, special relativity brings another constant c and of course, we are going to be interested in those regions where both h bar and c are important. Okay? We cannot neglect them. 
Okay, that's um, good. Um, you should recall that, for example, um, if you are given canonical coordinates q j and q k, then their Poisson bracket is 0 okay, that you would have studied in a classical mechanics course. Similarly, if you take a Poisson bracket of p j and p k, okay, p's are the canonical conjugate variables um, for q. So, q and p are uh, q's and p's form a conjugate um, canonically conjugate set. Now, this is also 0 and what I am writing here, these are Poisson brackets and if you look at q j and p k, that is 1. Okay, this you would have learned in classical mechanics and if you promote the q's and the p's to operators, okay, so let us take one dimensional system so that there is only one q which we will call x and the corresponding p let us call p. Okay, then you would have this. right? Now, the prescription for making a quantum theory is you start with the Poisson bracket, okay, calculate it. So, for example, you got here 1 or here 1 okay, and replace the bra Poisson bracket by a commutator. So, you first promote the uh, x and p, these canonical variables to operator. So, that is what I am doing by hat and then the Poisson bracket is replaced by a commutator. So, this is x hat p hat minus p hat x hat okay. and whatever you got here on the right hand side in that you multiply i h bar. Okay. So, it is i h bar times 1 which is i h bar. So, that is how you make a quantum theory starting with classical theory. Okay, so, that is what I would really need you to uh, know in this course, so that when we are quantizing you will understand that this is what I am doing. Okay, so, I think this is all for prerequisites. Now, I think I already uh, mentioned this, we will restrict ourselves to only scalar fields. Okay, so, in this course I am going to um, develop the formalism for scalar theory, uh, scalar field theory okay? and we will not be um, studying spinner fields which are the ones which describes, describe for example, the electrons and positrons and other fermions nor I would be discussing about gauge fields. For example, we will not be discussing photons and other gauge fields and we will solely restrict to scalar fields. But the framework that which we are going to develop here will be with minor extensions, uh, at least the parts which I am going to cover, they can be you know used for um, scalar theory and gauge field theory also. Okay. So, that is the plan for this course and this will be a um, uh, 30 hours course, so which will be like something like 12 weeks okay and yeah so that's the plan and let's meet in the next video